the following podcast is intended only for listeners who are intent on growing the business. Welcome to Innovate Marketing, where we are bringing you interviews with those that are making waves in the world of marketing, branding, and business growth. We are brought to you by mypodcast.media. If you're wondering how podcasting can help you unleash your marketing strategy, visit mypodcast.media. And now I'd like to introduce you to your host for Innovate Marketing, Sherry Peek. Welcome to Innovate Marketing. Today, our special guest is Stacy Ross Cohen. Stacy specializes in everything branding. She is the CEO and founder of Cole Communications, a public relations, marketing, and design agency headquartered in New York. An award-winning brand professional who earned her stripes on Madison Avenue and at major television networks before launching her own agency, Stacy specializes in everything branding. Since 1998, Stacy has coached individuals and businesses across various industries. Stacy recently made her debut on the TEDx stage. She is a contributor at the Huffington Post and Entrepreneur, and has been featured in Forbes, Crane's Entrepreneur, and a suite of other national media. Welcome to the show, Stacy. Thank you, Sherry. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. You are very welcome. How are you doing today? I am great. It's, um, I just feel Monday, it's the start of a, of a great week. We have to put good energy out and, and make it that way. I love that. How are you doing? I am doing well today. Thank you for asking. And I'm glad that you're doing well and putting fresh energy out there every day, Stacey. I've been telling myself tomorrow will be better. And I'm hanging on to that. Just so many different things going on. We're just bedded for so much of our attention and time and things that we have to do. And sometimes by the end of the day, you just feel like I can't go on another day. But I tell myself every day it will be better. And you reaffirmed that today. So thank you very much. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We, we have to make it our own. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm looking forward to talking with you and having you share your wealth of knowledge and experience with our listening audience today. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into our conversation today. So let's start with looking at three things. First, many view PR as a media coverage, but you've shared it so much more. So can you explain a little bit about what brings you into the space of PR and why you made that statement or why that statement might be true? Yeah, because, because a lot of people look at public relations as, um, you know, just managing reputation and spinning stories. And there's so many misconceptions around public relations. Public relations is... Um, it's really a, a, a strategy to to build um, relationships with audiences, shape a company's image, shape public opinion, and you know there's also a lot of different types of public relations. A lot of people will automatically think uh, you know it as media relations. That's only one component. So media relations meaning, uh, you know, getting coverage on CNN or the New York Times or, or Forbes, but it's, it, it's so much more than that. There's also different specialties. There's government relations, there's investor relations, there's crisis management. So there's so many disciplines of PR. And then to make that even more complicated, public relations has blurred with other forms of marketing. So it's, it's again, it's, um, to me, public relations is, is one of the most effective uh, branding tools. And, um, you know, I have been a practitioner for over 25 years. And I would probably say with the advent of social media, it has changed more in the last, like, 10 years than in the 25 plus years that, that I've, I've been in this space. It's uh, really exciting. Well, that's, that's interesting that you say that. So you mentioned marketing in your uh, response. So why is it important to align PR 
to marketing strategy or business goals? Here's the interesting thing. It's, I just think like all of marketing has, has become more accountable because especially in the digital realm, we can, we can measure everything and we can measure it in, in real time. And public relations was probably like one of one and still is to a degree, like one of the lagging tools in the public relations arsenal. Because if you think about it, it's like, you know, you can measure if a company is, is doing lead generation and, and, you know, they have a whole funnel, they can scientifically get how many leads converted. Public relations, if, you know, if we get our clients, let's say on CNN or featured in, in the Wall Street Journal, it's it's a little bit more difficult. And so there's, there's different ways to, to gauge that. Uh, but I do think more than ever, I think, you know, what differentiates me from other PR practitioners is that I always say I'm a marketer first. And I actually have an MBA in marketing. And I've always been on both sides of, of marketing and public relations. And it's really important, like, being in PR is not just about sending out press releases. You know, it's, you've got to have that, you know, that high level strategic uh, view of, of how you approach public relations. So you have to think of anything that a marketer, marketer would think of. It's like, who is your target audience? What are your goals? What are your business goals? What are your objectives? And also, can you quantify them? You know, you really need to quantify them to be able to see if you're, if, if you know, if you're moving the dial with PR. And, and, and again, if you think about it, marketing is very methodical. It's very deliberate steps. So when we start out with any, let's say, client that just wants to use our our services in the PR realm, because again, we are more full service. We always start out with, with a strategic marketing brief. And so we get an understanding of their target audiences. We clearly define them, their, their objectives. And what are the messages? You know, what are the magnetic messages or some people call them sticky messages because typically a brand will have three, maybe four different target audiences. And the messaging that works for one audience may not be relevant to another audience. So it's really, really important aspect to make sure that, that we are spot on with the, with the, with the messaging. That's a pretty, pretty well detailed response. And I want to talk a little bit more about the media coverage now. And we know that, you know, we, you've kind of explained to us the the difference between the two or that it's so much more that's included in that a PR other than media coverage. But we know a lot of people hang their hat on media coverage. How can I get it? You know, where can you place my information or how could you market me better? Can you just share some tips on how to increase the chances of earning media coverage? Absolutely. One of my favorite questions. And, you know, um, one thing that I just want to add to me, public relations, media relations, that's earned media, right? That's media that, that, you know, you don't pay for. It's to me, it's the most valuable because it builds trust and credibility. And as a matter of fact, you'll appreciate this. Bill Gates uh, has famously been quoted. If I was down to my last marketing dollar, I would spend it on PR. And so let's look at media coverage. Uh, there are definitely best practices involved with media coverage. Probably the most important is that there's got to be news value, right? There has to be news value because it's like, I also look at myself as, as, and, and I am, I'm a journalist, you know? And so, so if you want media coverage, you have to get into the reporter's mind and also the end user. Is it the viewer of, you know, uh, you know, the Today Show or, or, you know, CNN? 
what are, you know, what are they reading and what is important to them. And once you, once you do that, you've got to get the news value up to 10. Because if you think about it, think about the word news. New, right? Right? News is new. So if if you're presenting a story that doesn't have what we call in PR the hook, your chances of getting media coverage are slim. So you've really got to, um, sometimes you have to really get creative, but there's, there's a couple of um, things that your audience needs to think about, like different news items that can get coverage. One of them could be like a year end wrap up, you know, and also projections. So if there's, there's a brand that's, um, you know, has like some interesting data or statistics, that would be a great thing to do a wrap up the end of December, generate a news release in, in January. And that brings to the point that the media loves data. They love data. So, You've got to, in your pitch or your news release, always validate what you're saying with, with um, you know, with the credible data source. The other thing is any corporate announcements. So there could be a milestone, and, and you know, we've all seen, you know, companies, let's say a brand, uh, their 25th year anniversary. Uh, could be strategic partnerships or the CEO is, uh, you know, accepted a board position. So there's those corporate announcements. There's also, again, new products, services. Again, remember they're new. It could be, it could be an event. It could be a company is doing something charity, goodwill. Um, and I also think the other important thing is, is to, there's something called newsjacking in media relations. Have you ever heard of it? No, I haven't. So please tell us. <laughs> I know you're going to understand this because, you know, the bottom line is is like you've got to keep the the news. It's got to be fresh. It's got, you know, anything that is any brands that are disrupting an industry. But you want to look at trends, right? You want to see what's trending. So newsjacking is is really look at what's trending, what's hot now, and figure out how you can fit into the news cycle. And so, for example, this month is International Women's Month. Like maybe you're a brand that's that's doing a, you know an activation event around you know women's you know March March is Women's History Month. Maybe it's it's just around the whole month. Maybe you're having a photo exhibit at a local library. This is, even though this is local news, if it's, you know, again, if it has that news value of 10, you have a much better chance of being able to get noticed by not just local media, but also wider to, you know, to go further and, and, and deeper. Wow. That's pretty interesting. I'm taking notes here, Stacy, because I found that pretty interesting as at my organization, we just did some celebration, uh, one around black history month and then two also around international women's day. So I can relate to what you're sharing uh, with that being your example as well. So that's one of the emerging trends that we see now and how people are using PR and media to further their mission and to get that new news. I like that also. Yes, yes, yes. And I always say that this is one thing that people have to understand. Like advertising is a right, right? Like if, if you pay for, you know, whether it's a social media campaign or a print campaign, like you pay for it. So you have full control with media relations you don't. So I always say advertising is a right and PR is a privilege because getting that media coverage is, it's so powerful. And the one point that I want to make is that it's really important once a brand or an individual gets a, gets like media coverage, you've got to leverage it, right? So you want to make sure that you, that you put it on your website. You could build it into your bio. You know, Sherry has been quoted by national media outlets, including blah, blah, blah. You know, we've all gone on websites also, you know, as seen on 
uh, you know, Good Day New York and, and Forbes. And right away that forms an impression. You also want to share it on social media. Uh, you know, again, even your email signature line is valuable real estate to have like a link to a recent uh, media coverage. Wow. Considering all of those things, what do you think are the biggest challenges facing businesses today when it comes to marketing, branding, and PR? That is a great, great question. We need to market in the moment. And so we're marketing in, in real time. And I used to say, and, and I know that you're going to appreciate it, in when I started, started and I started in corporate, I was with CBS and I, I was like, wow, you really need like eyes in the front of your head and the back. Now you need 20, you, you know, you need sensors every single part of, of your body, especially with the 24 seven news cycle. And so it's again, being able to market in real time and, and, you know, just change on, on a dime, because if something's not working, you've got to adapt. So the bottom line is, is that you've got to be nimble. You've got, you know, it's like change to me is, is the word of, of the day, because you probably know the saying, if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same result. But I say to people, no, if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to be stuck in reverse because the new competitive advantage is really about innovation and change. So we just have to get more comfortable with change and realize that there's so much clutter out there. And to some degree, I have to say, to some degree, it is like throwing spaghetti on the wall and, and some of it is going to stick and some of it is not. So what are some of the PR tools out there that a company business can use to help up-level their, their strategy or their PR or media coverage game, if you will? That's a great, great question. And, and I have to tell you, there's a new tool, at, you know, like every, every day. There really are. So th there are pure, um, like, media outreach tools. There's tools like like Cision, uh, where my team will uh, build media lists based on topic or industry segment. Uh, that's, uh, that's definitely very popular. And there's actually different feeds. I don't know, have you ever heard of Harrow? Help a reporter out. I think so. So Harrow is very cool. I actually, because I don't do the day-to-day -day pitching like my team does, but I'm always interested in seeing what the media is covering. And so, you know, you'll definitely see trends. Like there's no doubt today because of, of the whole banking crisis with Signature Bank and First Republic, there's going to be a lot of queries that reporters are going to look for sources uh, you know, in finance. So there's Harrow, help a reporter out, and also ProfNet, which is part of Cision. And Harrow is free. And again, I highly recommend it. So anyone that signs up, you get three to four feeds a day, and it's journalists that are covering any topics. It could be from biosciences to pizza making to cannabis to you name it. And they're looking for expert sources. And so basically you will respond to the query and the sooner the better because they, they tend to get a lot of responses. And as a result of it, we've gotten a lot of our clients very high level coverage through this source. It's a great source. I highly, highly recommend it. There's also sources um, like that can track uh, media campaigns. There's, there's mention and critical mention and every brand, and this is, this is free, should absolutely put on something what's called a Google alert. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, Cherry, but you know, even for your nonprofit, you know, just to see what, what's out there because any time that, someone's brand is mentioned online or in the media, you will get a Google alert. So you, you want to hear 
what, you know, what is everyone saying about your brand? And so that's really important. And then there's other analytic tools. There's, there's one called Presley that actually, you know, will, will help with, with metrics, but there's no shortage of tools. There was, which is, which is really insane because even going back like 10 years ago, there, the number of tools then versus now, it's, there's just explosion. There's quite a bit out there. 10X. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I've yes, learned a lot yes. just from this short time talking. So once someone um, perhaps engages with these tools, how can you or they measure the PR success that they're getting from uh, implementing these tools or these strategies that you've mentioned today? So a lot of these tools have these unbelievable graphics and they will um, give you the intelligence of, of, um, of reach. At the end of the day, it's really about the number of, of eyeballs, you know, like, like, so how many people have, have read the article or, or viewed, or could also be measured in views. There's a lot of different metrics. It's also, uh, you know, in terms of public relations and social media walk hand in hand. So you also can send out a news release through a distribution service. That's another tool I failed to mention, like PR Newswire, Business Wire, EIN, Global Newswire. And you can really optimize the release and make it almost like a smart release. So you put in a link that goes back to your company website and you can actually go and look at the Google analytics. And it's quite often that you'll see like a week to 10 days after the release is put out, you will, you will see a big boost in how many people have visited the, the website. So there's a lot of different ways, but at the end of the day, the bottom line is that this is about eyeballs. Like, you know, how many people have, have seen it, engaged with it. It's all, it's all about engagement. And, and also that it comes back to the importance of making sure that you leverage it. So if you get media coverage, don't let it just stay out there. Just make sure that you have it on, on all your channels. Now, let's bring it a little closer to home. So we've talked about sources and tools. Now, you started your business, as you mentioned, over 25 years ago, and you're now the CEO and founder of Cold Communications. How can your service, your business as a tool, as a source, help individuals looking to scale up their work in the area of media coverage or PR in the climate that we're sitting in now as it relates to social media and all of those different avenues that are available for someone to um, grow their business? Love, love, love that question. And I'm going to, I'm going to boil it, it down because I think it really comes to two important things that we can help companies do. I mean, first, when companies are looking to work with a communications firm, and again, you'll see so much variation between different services, they need three buckets. One is a company that's strategic, you know, they have that 12,000 foot view. The next bucket is creativity. I feel like it's our job to make our clients stand out. And the third bucket is precision and implementation, which is equally as important. So the two things that it boils down to is one, we can, we help our clients and it's more important than ever to be masters of first impressions with declining attention spans, and I don't know if you've heard this statistic, but the average American has an attention span of like eight seconds. So so it's like, you've got to be a master of first impressions and you've got to come out bigger, better, bolder, and stronger than anyone. The second one is there's so much content out there, Sherry. I'm sure like we were just talking pre-interview. It's like, it's a little overwhelming. Like, the, and, and there's so many different channels. Like, like, should I go on TikTok tonight? Should I watch TV? Should I look at my Instagram reels? It's so overwhelming. And so I always say, um, and it's, it's really my mantra. It's like add value, not clutter. 
right? So it's like you have to think about your audiences and what is what is going to be meaningful, what is going to be valuable information for them. And so again, you always have to think about your target audience and the what's in it for them. And then I always say to to everyone before you post something and before you put you know write a blog or send out a news release does it have news value and does it pass the who cares test is it going to be relevant to your target audience you have been very relevant with your target audience and in our pre-interview time uh, you talked about one of your biggest achievements um, that you've done uh, since you've been doing the work with cold communications do you want to share about that I would love to share. I mean, how, how, many, how many times do you get to build a bridge? <laughs> so probably going back about eight years ago, our firm was hired uh, to handle the 18-month campaign to rebuild the Tappan Zee Bridge, which is now the Mario Cuomo Bridge. And it was, uh, you know, a multi-channel integrated communications campaign. We needed to create some urgency to, to build the bridge. We uh, named the overall campaign, Build the Bridge Now, NY.org. And we got the social media, the PR, press conferences, reaching out to different stake, stakeholders group. There's community relations, a lot of, of moving um, parts. And I have to tell you, Sherry, that I know more about bridges <laughs> than I ever thought I would. And this bridge really needed to be rebuilt. Um, there were a lot of band-aids built on it. It was built in the 1950s and um, it was well past its, its life expectancy. So when I drove over the new bridge, which is absolutely stunning the first time, tears were just streaming down my eyes out of out of joy like when you can make um you know again garner the support to make something like this happen and, and believe me there were a lot of a lot of different stakeholders and um supporters behind this but just feeling you know that that to make that impact is so is so meaningful and um and also did improve the, the traffic flow. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Win-win for everybody. And it's a beautiful view from what I can see. Many might not see it, but it's wonderful. Now, as we kind of wrap up with a, with a couple of questions, I want to give you a chance also to share about the another source and tool, which is your book, Brand Up the ultimate playbook for college and career success, which has been a game changer for teens to stand out in or increasingly connected, cluttered, and competitive world, as we've talked about before. So tell us about your new book, Stacey. First of all, you said that so well. Can can I can I hire you as my agent? <laughs> That's great. Sure, I'll come work with so, you, Stacey. So, so I'm sorry, just, just a little show and tell, because it just it's coming out April 4th. Uh, but I got a couple of advanced copies over over the weekend, and I am so excited about the book. It's been a six year journey. Uh, had a lot of iterations. At first, it was targeted to parents, but the publisher. I was at the same time working on a teen companion book, so this is for high school students, and he really wanted to focus on, on that. So, really provides building blocks to create a personal brand which is more important than ever. A lot of people don't like the word personal brand, but it truly is in the world of social media. It's it's no longer a luxury, it's a requirement. And the book, it also talks about, it's a playbook, it's very interactive, a lot of exercises. How do you use social media to your advantage for both college and career success? There's also chapters on it like there's a chapter on LinkedIn. I feel that every 16 year old should have a LinkedIn presence. There's a chapter on networking, a chapter on interviewing, entrepreneurship. These are all critical 21st century skills that are, are not um, necessarily being taught in the home or high school. So I'm really, really excited about the book. And I also wanna like level the playing field for youth because 
I'm also I'm going to be giving a donation to a couple of youth organizations like the Boys and Girls Clubs, um, the Y, and Girls Inc. And it doesn't matter. There's some kids that were just not meant for college, and there's some kids that want to go into a trade like carpentry or hairdressing. And, and this book is also for them. It's just about like really getting their digital footprint strong. I always say, and, and it's so true, like Google is, is the new resume and people are going to search for us. They are searching for us. And here's a crazy statistic. 75% of admission officers, the same thing goes for recruiters. I think it's probably 85% for recruiters are looking at kids social media and so it's it's like you we just need to impart on our kids and and they're really smart but they don't necessarily do smart things on social media so we've got to get them early i love that you say that because i had this exact conversation last night with a young person i said what are you going to be doing after college so i don't know if i'm going to go to college i'm thinking about going to a trade school so I love this playbook that you have available uh, because truly these are conversations that we need to have more of because we have a changing generation and they know that they have a lot of different options. So I want to thank you for uh, putting out this playbook and I will be sharing the information about your book with parents that I know that have children, you know, coming out of high school. Well, as we wrap up our time together, Stacy, what would be, uh, one, what would be final thoughts that you would like to leave with our listening audience? And then also, can you tell people how they can connect with you beyond our time here together? I can't express the importance of, of being a master of first impressions. It's, you know, and if you think about it, that really kind of has to do with the book, but also public relations. It's like, you you often don't get a second chance so you have to make sure what what you're putting out there is it's it's not about me 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 or your brand it's like what is it what is the benefit to others what is the value to others and so again going back to what i said before adding value and clutter if you can keep these things in mind and i think the other things is, is i mentor a lot of youth We've got, to, we've got to manufacture our own opportunities. No one is, is going to do it for us. So, you know, just as, as a business owner and, and always taking risks, and, and I have to tell you, failing a lot, and, and I'm really okay with it, but own it. And, and you've got to stretch out of your comfort level because I feel that every failure, yeah, it hurts, but every failure is truly a stepping stone to success. That is wonderful, wonderful things to leave with our audience. And how can people reach you, Stacy, beyond our time here together? So, so the best time is connect via Instagram at Stacy Ross Cohen. Okay. And they can find your playbook where? They can find my playbook on Amazon. And if they just Google brand up, it's actually, it's being sold on Amazon, Barnes and Noble and Target. And it will be in retail, Barnes & Noble, as well as Target. Okay. Well, Stacy, thank you so much for being with us today and pouring out your, your knowledge, your wisdom, your expertise to our listening audience today. And thank you for having me. It's my absolute pleasure. And I look forward to continuing the conversation. My key takeaways from my conversation with Stacy today can be applicable for both our personal and our business endeavors. And the first one is PR is all about building relationships. Another is that media loves data, so always validate a press release or pitch with data. Another is you have to leverage any coverage that you do get. And also remember to add value and not clutter. And to wrap all of this up with a pretty bow, we've got to manufacture our own opportunities. And remember friends that while we are pursuing our personal, professional, or business growth, that failing will happen. 
But a good way for us to view failing is that even when we fail, when we own it, that gives us an opportunity not to take on the negative effect of failing, but it gives us an opportunity to see failing as an opportunity to grow. Well, friends, that's all that we have for you today. We hope that you have enjoyed our conversation. And until next time, be safe and stay great. That brings us to the close of this edition of Innovate Marketing. We're glad you tuned in. Innovate Marketing is brought to you by MyPodcast.media. MyPodcast.media produces podcasts for brands, influencers, and nonprofits. Find us online at MyPodcast.media. Your producer for Innovate Marketing is Beth Freed. Executive producer, Sean Neal. And your host is Sherry Peak. We'll see you next time. Be sure to tune in.